interesting thing, when I went to New York University, uh, my, my supposed to be boss had um, soldiers, parachuters, tanks, cannons, uh, all around the room, parachuters trying to jump off the ceiling, some airplanes hanging off the ceiling. When I saw all of that, I started to laugh. He said, what's funny? I said, sir, I, I just left one crazy country and I'm entering into, the, into this kind of room. What are you trying to say? I'm a Vietnam veteran. I said, sir, nothing to be proud of. <laughs> that moment, our relationship died. We uh, tried to figure out, you know, different directions for jobs. I thought I had one thing lined up, but that fell through. Rusty and Riohe happened to take Radomir to a special judo demonstration at the Dwight School, where Riohe was teaching. It changed Radomir's life in this country forever. Before you know it, Radomir um, said to me, uh, can I say a few words? Uh, why not? I introduced him to Spawn. And, well, he got up and he started talking to all these young people about how lucky they were to be in this country and... He went on with, uh, I mean, he had tears in his eyes because he knows what was going on in the rest of the world and what he had been through. And uh, he, he had the kids, like, uh, he had them almost in tears, and Mr. Spawn and everybody, and it was just phenomenal. And it was like uh, a rude awakening, and yet uh, it was like uh, maybe uh, somebody from the Bible coming through town and... and talking about all these great things in life. And the headmaster of the school approach came close to me and said, oh, this is fantastic. Uh, do you need any help? I said, no, no, I don't need help. But Rusty jumped and says, no, no, we need the green card for him. And Dr. Spawn said, that's it. I have to have this man in my life, in my school, with my family. And uh, he uh, offered him a job right off. It's interesting. He'll say to a young boy or girl when they come in, he'd say, tell me what your dream is, not give them his dream. So if a boy wants to play on a soccer team at school and just make the team, he'll give them enough to make the soccer team. If a girl comes in and says, I want to become the Olympic champion, and then he'll ask, how serious are you? How much are you willing to endure? Now, once that student has said, I'm willing to endure whatever you can give me, this man will find a way to give them the knowledge how to find the path. I'm 30 years old now. I've known Radomir since I was 17. And in that span of time, the training that Radomir imbued and the philosophy that Radomir imbued in me has helped me immensely, whether it be entering Columbia and being number six on the team. By the time I left, every year I had moved up a spot till finally I was captain. We won the Ivy League championships and we were undefeated. My training with Radomir, that imbued in me an ability not only to succeed myself individually on the court, I was able to inspire the entire team, an entire group, to perform better than they had thought possible. One of the things that Alvin used to do is decide that he couldn't do things. And he realized that. So he made him um, stop worrying about what he couldn't do and do the things he could do until he could do the things he thought he couldn't do. Next thing, there are three group of people. Who they are? Spectators, losers, winners. Spectators are people who don't like to risk. Losers are people are people who gave up on themselves. Always, I can't, I don't know, my mommy, my daddy will do. These are the losers. And who are the winners? Everyone that tries and... And always who believes that they can do something. I can, I want. I it's taken me a long time to realize the significance of what he has to offer because perhaps like other people I was frightened too 
about the approach and notions that he had 10, 12 years ago. I see more interest in Buddhism. I see more interest in Eastern ways of slowing down, taking time, clearing the mind, thinking in that way. That perhaps reflect we're catching up a little bit with some of the things he originally had to have on offer. So from my point of view as an administrator, yes, I think there are risks in this and it has to be tempered. But I think I've learned overall that there are important truths here which have been shared. I'm 15 years here in New York and uh, I'm working with the children who are really difficult, that everybody gave up on them. The toughest case was a boy who tried to commit suicide at the age of 15. Ambulance took him to hospital, they uh, cleaned him up. He survived. Both my husband and myself were helpless. We did not know how to approach our son, how to get him straight. We're both also very busy people, business people, traveling a lot, and we felt helpless. He was on and off Ritalin and Dexeterin and you name it, all the, and it had terrible effect, on, good effect on one hand with the ability to focus, bad effect on the other hand with uh, stopping uh, appetite and uh, really bad things. And I, until I put my foot down and I said, I don't care about studies, I don't care about tests, I want my son to be healthy, no more of this medicine. Somebody told me, talk to Radimir. He is a great person. He is a great educator. Talk to him. I will take the children, uh, develop a relationship with them, and in a year, two, three years, prove that all people who told them, no, you don't have a chance, that they have a chance. He, he came to us and he suggested that if we really want to make a difference in Jonathan's life, we got to do something much more drastic. Radimir took Jonathan by the hand to the airport and flew with him to Tokyo. And my heart was broken. I took him from, uh, from here to Japan, from Japan to Yugoslavia, from Yugoslavia to Italy. And I knew that it would be some time until I see Jonathan. And I knew that part of the strictness of this program is for us to stay in the background and, and at first not to even talk to Jonathan until he adjusts and until he finds himself. Child, to go through all of that, must love me. For me to be with the child, I must love the child too. That's why there is a proverb which says, uh, teacher will be found only when student is ready. Me and Jonathan's younger sister, Lily, we went to visit Jonathan, and it was incredible. Seeing him happy and building his body on the road to health. I saw this boy uh, April 25th, straight, beautiful, gorgeous spinal cord. Unbelievable. And uh, I wish him, every time I wish him, uh, I see him, I wish him happy birthday. <laughs> With the children like that, I love to work because uh, they are willing to change. Every day, for you, Olympic Games, championships, competitions, and winnings are? Every day. Is this clear to you? Yes. Yeah.